Hi guys, my name's Seb Tudor, I'm the man on Silver Mountain, and welcome back. Now today, I kind of wanted to talk about something that's maybe not the, the happiest of subjects, and also not as advisory as some of the lists and things that I've done uh, previously for both the Tuesday and the Thursday uh, shows. But, um, the thing that I want to talk about today most prominently is um, related to a story that's come out of the States, but it's more the interactions around it than the actual event. And the event is that a YouTube uh, individual who has somewhere in the region of like 500,000 subscribers uh, called Austin Jones, who is some kind of cover artist, um, was arrested and charged for basically producing and you know having hold of child pornography as a result of uh, influencing his, members of his young audience to send him videos and things like that and whatever else to the extent that he was he was um, in court records said to be um, said to have said that she needed to prove that she was his biggest fan by sending him the videos and doing these things and you know he's he's facing a very long jail sentence which seems to be very rightly deserved um in in a lot of different ways he seemed to be um quite should we say uh kind of embedded in doing this to a degree so you know we'll have to we'll have to see what comes of this but there are three things that i want to discuss that kind of come out of this yeah one of which has to do with with the way that those kids were being supervised to actually allow them to do this stuff, um, allow themselves to to be the victim. And I'm not suggesting that that they are at fault. Yeah, they were they are young, easily influenced individuals who were looking for validation, praise, acceptance, and whatever else. In which case, I have you know they were used and abused essentially, but. As said, they're minors. They're using internet that they're not paying for. They're using computers and things that they're probably not paying for. Their their parents have a role to play in keeping them safe, and that includes online. Um, when I was a kid, I was even even though I was using gay, you know, I was I was playing online games um, at, at, at various points. You know, I think the, the the time that I was really allowed to access the internet in full by myself without any issue was when I was about 15, 16 years old, in which case I already knew better. Uh, I was mostly just using it for gaming and for searches for like schoolwork and things like that. And so as a result, though, I still had my parents ensuring that... Um, I was aware of the dangers that I I wasn't going to inadvertently become prey to to someone purely because they had suggested something that sounded good to me. Yeah, uh, I was very much aware of the dangers. Uh, they would very much poke and prod and pry um, at times to make sure that I wasn't doing things that were untoward or dangerous or, or whatever else. Um, and so, you know, as a result, with that, I was safe. I was aware of the dangers. I was, I was aware of what I was doing. And that's, you know, that they were there to support and make sure that I was all right. Yeah. They didn't need to be sat next to me whilst I was playing, I don't know, uh, an online shooter or when I was playing an MMO or something like that. But they would ask me about it. They would actually take an interest in my life to such an extent that they would at least know what I was doing and what was going on yeah you don't have to 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 approach your kids this way um, to, to make sure that they're safe and so on by being kind of hostile and, and oppressive and going no you can't use it no you can't do this no you can't do that but you can approach them as a positive force as a friend as someone taking interest in the things that they're doing which means that then they're likely to share with you, yeah? And so through sharing with you, through having conversations about the stuff they're doing, the people they're communicating with, whatever else, you can actually then also ensure their safety instead of letting them sit alone, silent in their bedrooms when they're 14 years old, as, as these, these two victims that came forward to cause this, uh, this case uh, against him 
were, you know, you can you can approach people that age and have a good conversation with them. You do not have to leave them alone. You do not have to leave them unmonitored. You know, it's not so much a trust issue as it's a kind of safeguarding issue. Yeah, you are more likely to be able to look after someone if they are willing to work with you to remain safe, in which case actually communicate with your kids, actually look into this. Obviously, these kids have either had their parents find something or they've told their parents about it, in which case that's good. But imagine what would have happened if there had been maybe more of that discourse, more, discourse, more of that interest beforehand to allow this to be prevented altogether and for the first couple of, of suggestions from this asshole um, to these kids would have then you know been been uh, a big red flag earlier on and could have been raised earlier so you know there are only um two individuals i believe that have been um yeah two 14 year old girls who who um are mentioned in the court records and yet we don't know you know as I said his audience at the very least in terms of people that subscribe to him is somewhere in the region of 500 to 600,000 people many of which are teen girls so how many of them has he preyed on yeah that's that's the issue um here and it's it's a case of regardless of how much you trust your kid regardless of how sensible your kid is until such time as they are legally and fully capable of going off and doing their own thing you should be keeping an eye yeah there are parental locks and things anyway to to prevent certain types of content that they can you know so, so they can't approach that if you feel it'd be harmful that's fine but at the same time that isn't the end all of it yeah there needs you need to have a greater understanding of what they're doing and who they're doing it with to then still kind of ensure their safety you know it's it's if you think of the internet as a, a large party or a large meeting place, yeah, if you were sending your kid to a party, you would probably want to know who's going to be there, if there are going to be supervising adults, yeah, and things like that. In which case, that should be very, very similar for what you're, you're looking for in terms of information about what your kid is doing online. Or at least that's the takeaway that I have from these things when they pop up, especially when it's on a platform like YouTube. That, as I've said before, so many users, so much discourse, so much openness, yeah? But with that comes the, the potential to encounter the dark side of people, yeah? Because everyone's in a gray, everyone's in a gray state, no one's black or white. Um, in in like broad strokes across the platform or across the planet, in which case what we you know need to be aware of, especially if you're looking after kids, is kind of how this all works. Yeah, but that's my first point. The second point actually has to do with him and the fact that you've got an awful lot of young people these days who are being put into positions that they are not necessarily particularly well acclimatized to and what I mean by that is in this guy's instance he's a young guy who has suddenly gained huge amounts of attention yeah positive attention positive feedback yeah he's he's seemingly earning money off it he's he's able to go and do the things that he wants he is being given kind of a level of, of trust and authority um, around certain things that these kids are giving him, you know, and, and so as a result, whether he had this deep inside him anyway as a, an issue that sh probably could have been dealt with earlier if it had been more transparent or if it had been caught, if he had been caught earlier, um, then, you know, that fair enough. Or if this is a thing that he has learned as a result of well, I'm in control of these people and I want things. So bec I, because I'm, I've am i been given all of this and I've got everything that I've wanted, I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep looking for those things that I want. Yeah. Um, whether Whichever way it goes, it's a case of I've seen this before in young managers. I've seen this before in young people promoted well above their station and experience and maturity level. 
and uh, they 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 snap. Yeah, they don't have the the gravity um, to keep them down. They don't have the integrity of their character in in terms of their character that that only builds up over time. Yeah, or through really hard experience, they don't have that, and so as a result. I'm not surprised by this story. Lots of people have been going, "Oh no, it's it's, it's a YouTuber. It's it's this this guy. He's he's been so kind of squeaky clean. That's why he's in this kind of space." And I'm like, "No, I'm sorry. It's a young guy who's been given far too much um, social power, far too fast, and he's been idolized. And so guess what? He's abusing the power because he doesn't have the experience or integrity to hold on to it." Yeah. Now, I, 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 when I came into management, I was young. I was 18 when I first took on a management role. Yeah. And yet I had had to take on um, kind of leadership management roles of various sorts through school in my family with with my brother, um, you know, and some of the very hard stuff that happened around that that I don't really want to go into in this video, but I might talk about at some point in the future. You know, those um, those things that we had to go through with that, where it came down to me having to be professional, remove myself from it, even though it was my family, yeah? I had to take a, a step away from it to really hold on to what was going on, to, to really understand it, to really work with it so that I could not only sort it out for myself, but also the other people that were around me, especially my family. You know, with, with these kind of things that gave me a lot of hard experience I you know a lot of kind of maturity before my time um, the was commented on by all manner of people as I was growing up which didn't necessarily bug me but was odd to me um, and and yet as a result when I actually got into management I started I started going okay well I need to start telling people what to do and it really didn't it, it, it kind of I, I saw an awful lot of other people going on the kind of mini Hitler, you know, getting everyone to to kind of goose step around them um, as best they can. And then I, I saw them being resented. I saw them being tackled against, um, you know, resented, whatever. And that was a thing that then made me go, well, actually, I'm I'm already not happy with the way that I'm being told to do things. So I'm going to diverge i'm going to actually lead the team you know instead of purely managing them and pushing them around like pawns they're going to work with me and we're going to achieve a goal and so as a result of that i w i worked very very well yeah i was i just because i was willing to sacrifice a little bit more on behalf of my team they were willing to do the same back and it all worked out better but those other managers put into this position who were around the same age you know, they would quite actively um, push people around or they wouldn't take things seriously or they would just get frustrated and, you know, run off for a fag or whatever, you know. And so looking at this, again, I'm not surprised because it's this young person who seemingly has had a fairly easy ride of it considering the, the he's doing covers of other people's songs uh, and putting them up online and just getting attention for it, yeah. Um, there, there's not much uh, beyond that that I, I can, I've been able to find him doing, and so he's he's worked at that to an extent that he's just got this this flow of attention and good things. And so, what's he done with it? Well, he's wanted more attention and good things. You know, it's it's a fairly straightforward thing that he's done. He's taken the most direct route, direct route to get it. So that doesn't surprise me. But the thing that I the, that I want to end this point on is that these these people need to who are who are young, who are moving out from the world, you or moving out into the world. They're being told that they're entitled, told that they're all of these things, and that doesn't help to begin with. But also. The, the fact that the way that the world is structured at the moment, in most Western society at least, goes, you go through school, you go through more school, you, you kind of finish school, 
And then you go to university, which nowadays isn't preparing people for the workplace. It's not really providing specialised education apart from in very, very specific subjects at times. Uh, there's an awful lot of politicising of things that are, are completely apolitical and it becomes high school plus, yeah? It's not a place where adults go to develop, enrich their lives, enrich the people around them and move forward with their careers. It's a place where you go to fuck around in a lot of different ways, yeah? And I don't mean that in terms of they literally just go there and do nothing, but it is just more school. You go there, you hang around with your friends, you have your lessons and things, you have to get your work done, sure, but it's not intensive, unless you're, again, you're in very, very specific subjects where it has to be intensive, yeah? The, I, I have both worked at a university and, of course, I still see university life through the lens of, of Hannah's experience while she is still there, um, as well as numerous other friends of mine that are still at university and it's it's really troubling to me the the these places that are the, the most common route for people to kind of pass through on their way to a career in adulthood and stuff like that um they they, they aren't preparing people they're not developing them these kids into adults they're allowing them to remain kids for longer in various ways and that's not to say that they're not capable. That's not to say that they can't be mature and that they can't do, you know, have integrity and do all of these things. I'm just saying that why would they bother developing that stuff? What's Where's the logic when they don't have to? Yeah, this is why my personal opinion is university should be a job. You should, you, we, you know, you should go to it. You should essentially be employed. You, work, you go in nine to five every day of the week. You get, get your stuff done. You, you get kind of subsidised by the government, if not have the education be free and get money to live on to, to keep you running whilst you're there. Everyone is treated exactly the same and you come out the other end with a proper work ethic, a proper education that, that is apolitical and has no issues with any of those things. It just lets you be you as you work and learn. And then you come out the other end as a stronger, better person that's both easier to employ, less confusing to older employers, and also, hopefully, you have young people avoiding situations either like this or like the ones that I was talking about in regards to management, where they will abuse power, where they will not have that restraint, that control, that understanding of themselves to remove themselves in, in such a way to be professional, to, to um, not take advantage of 14 year old girls or make everyone's life in a workplace a living hell just because they need to impose their authority but anyway that's that point so so far we've got the the parents need to 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 maybe pay a little bit more attention and develop more of an understanding with their kids on this stuff so that you don't have um the the victimization happening before the the red flags get raised so that we can flip this round so that we have the red flags being raised early and then the victimization just doesn't happen we've got the 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 second point that i made was in regards to uh young folks and the fact that the it's not any surprising that this guy has done this considering he's young he's got everything he wants and so he's just going for more of that yeah, and, and the fact that the systems that we have in place at the moment to help young people grow currently are not good enough. They do a certain thing and they do not do enough of the rest of the stuff that, that they are there for to a degree. And it would not be hard necessarily to get them to do that. But then the last point, and I feel like this is actually the most important point because of... Um, the specifics of this situation that's risen and the fact that we have had these conversations before in regards to comments made by uh, Milo uh, Ianopoulos and and so on and, and various other people as well where you've got a lot of people kind of talking about um, what is it um, is it heptophilia whatever it is the the attraction to teens instead of the attraction to children and, and the fact that people want to do this, that and the other with it and blah, blah, blah. And this is and the, the, the thing that I, I think needs addressing here is we need a, a 
proper international discussion on the age of consent. Because quite frankly, when you can go from this having a situation here in the States where these 14 year old kids have been victimized and they are um, kind of uh, at risk and it is very, very illegal um, considering that within the state of Illinois where this guy is based, they have a slightly odd law where the age of consent is in, in Illinois is 17 years old. But for people over the age of 18 or 18 or over, it is illegal for them to commit acts of, se of a sexual nature on persons who are under the age of 18 uh, if they are in a position of authority or trust over the victim, which includes this guy because he is a public figure. He is, he is being trusted by these girls within his fan, bla his fan base. And um, as a result, for people who are either in positions of direct authority or positions who are being trusted as part of a community um, by potential victims, then the age of consent jumps up to 18 anyway. Yeah. But again, that that may very well be the case where he is living specifically. But throughout the United States, you have differences in regards to um, the, the various states having different laws. Very, you know, you have anywhere between the age of um, kind of 16 and 18 in broad strokes over most of the United States. Outside of the United States, though, those kids, the age of consent in numerous European countries, including places like uh, Germany, um, Bulgaria, where else? But yeah, you, we, we, uh, Ecuador in the in South America, even uh, we've got all manner of different places where those kids would have been within the age of consent. Yeah, throughout throughout Europe, throughout South America, um, throughout parts of Scandinavia and so on, you do have these lower um, ages of consent. And I mean, in the UK, it's it's sixteen. In, as said, Germany, it's it's 14. In France, it's 15. Yeah. And this is where the some of the problems I feel start when we start having these discussions, because when you've got a lot of people in the States going, this is disgusting. This is absolutely disgusting. These, this person, he's he's a garbage person because he needs to be um, completely kind of dealt with in the harshest manner because he victimized these kids. Yeah, I would completely agree with that due to the nature of the crime. But if it hadn't been a victimization thing, if he had met one of these girls and they were getting close, yeah, he would be like, and, and it was completely consensual and there was, there were, there was no um, cajoling with the prove you're my biggest fan shit. You know, if it had been much, much more consensual and open and whatever else, then he would be subject to exactly the same thing to one degree or another. And people in the States would be yelling, yeah, rightly so. People outside the States, though, and even in different states from the one that he was living in, may very well be looking at the situation differently. And this is where, again, I feel like we need an international discussion on the age of consent. Because when you have different countries all attributing kind of different ages, different levels, even when they're next door neighbors like France and Germany, where they, they, they are to one degree or another similar in terms of their, their overall kind of Western European culture. Um, you know, it's, it's a case of, of kind of looking at it and going, well, fair enough. What, what, why, why is the why is the year why is there a one year difference that makes kind of such a, a big thing? You know, you've got the age of consent in Italy being fourteen. You've got the age of consent in um, Luxembourg though being sixteen. You know, you've you've Lich Liechtenstein being fourteen. Um, I'm just reading down the list now, seeing what there is, and you know, the Netherlands is sixteen. Norway is sixteen. Poland is 15, Portugal is 14. You know, where's Spain, actually? Spain and Portugal, are they the same? 
So Spain is 16. So so what? Why? You know what is it that that makes people in Portugal go? Okay, well 14 is fine, but Spain go no, it has to be 16. You know we need to to have this discussion. We need to have this debate, and also in actually involve the kids that that are being talked about here, because obviously with things like proper sexual education, with um, a very open dialogue between young people and the people who are making the laws around this stuff. You know, having that dialogue is going to be important because they're the ones that are going to have to follow this law. They're the ones that are going to have to be aware of it as much as any older person. Because if if they are, as with these kids, being asked to do this stuff, but they were in a place the the where they were completely open and able to do this, yeah, they were able to consent. Then potentially you'd have a very different set of of situations. Again, even if he was a you, well, he's a YouTuber. He's online. He can access the entire world, and anyone can access his content. What if the person, you know, he's where he is, so he's probably going to be tried with that. But what if those kids were still in the states where where he is, Chicago or or wherever else, and yet he was international. He was somewhere else where the age of consent would have meant that they were perfectly fine to do this. You know that that he he would have felt that they were able to give consent where they actually weren't. You know, there, there's a much bigger discussion that needs to be had here around kind of the, these laws and how they interact on an international level, and and how this kind of thing just highlights not just how terrible people can be, but also where levels of understanding just don't seem to exist because. Like those kids, if they had maybe had a greater understanding of of what was being asked of them, of kind of how much they they were either allowed to or weren't allowed to do, considering where they live and what the laws are and whatever else, then you know there's there's that. I mean, one of them, I believe, in in one of the the sections that that was taken from a conversation between the two, a mess- uh, the messages did actually say that they didn't want to get in trouble and they didn't want him to get in trouble as a result of her sending him stuff. And it's like, so there was some awareness there, but obviously not enough. But this is this is kind of where this discussion needs to go, I think. We need to deal with the assholes that actually commit these crimes. We need to We need to tackle them, yeah? Because they are taking advantage of people and that's just wrong yeah we need to improve um the the kind of education and the 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 kind of character building element of education so that young kids like i mean this this austin jones guy he's still so fucking young and he's probably got sod all life experience he's got sod all interaction with the wider world and seemingly sod all interaction with hardship which quite frankly, is probably going to make prison a pretty significant culture shock to him. But, you know, we have to we have to develop those things, and then we actually have to have this big conversation, because we shouldn't be jumping between countries that, that seem to agree on so much in the way of, of these, these very straightforward things about not victimising people, not harming people, um, you know, we need to have this conversation and come to some kind of unified agreement considering that these stories are coming out and it's it's these international individuals who are making these, these cases high profile, yeah, that are opening discussions on them. And so we should capitalise on the discussions happening to actually try and achieve some kind of consensus and unity on this stuff so that it makes it easier for people to actually come forward when they are being victimised. It makes it easier for law enforcers to tackle the people who are actually committing crimes because there is one law for absolutely everybody. Yeah, Not like in the US where state to state it is changing. This should surely be a federal law. This should surely be a blanket statement of kind of once you are an adult, once you are a capable individual then we are trusting you to do the right thing. And if you can't do that, then you are going to suffer the consequences. Yeah, it shouldn't be a case of jumping between state and one state and another, like allows for different kind of limits on you. Yeah. And and 
that's where this discussion again needs to come in and needs to tackle this and really needs to be not just in the states where this has happened you know where it doesn't just need to be across the states it needs to be some kind of collective um agreement collective agenda so that we can deal with this on a larger scale if internet based individuals like this guy will will be going and taking advantage of their their viewer base in various ways yeah um but anyway let me know what you guys think uh on on all three of these points and on this asshole in the first place that's gone and done this yeah um because i'd never heard of him until this story came out um and then i've seen several people talking about it i saw it on the bbc uh on bbc news and so as a result i was like okay that's something that highlights some things that i want to discuss yeah, and so there's no point in me just you know I've said said my part I've said what I feel where we we the the adults in in these children's lives in these kids lives need to have a better dialogue with them and and keep a track of them especially online where stuff can go missing or fly off all over the place and be leaked uh, to all manner of different people um, just by clicking the wrong thing essentially. I've said that we, we need to tackle the fact that young people who are like this guy and who are just are able to run around online and do what they want, the reason why they are able to and the reason why they are able to take advantage of people and they do it with a, a clear, fairly clear conscience seemingly um, ultimately comes down to the fact that they aren't being taught early enough the they need to become an adult that they need to grow up that they need that they can't just go after what they want when it's not something that they are allowed you know there, there, there needs to be more of that um there needs to be more in the way of kind of teaching of citizenship and and the laws of the land that you live in um uh, along with that as well i feel um and then the last part is we need to have a big discussion on age of consent because having changing ages of consent when you cross imaginary lines that have been drawn on a map especially within one country like the united states where literally going over one state boundary to another allows for this complete upheaval and change of of all of the specific things being demanded of you you know there needs to be some kind of blanket arrangement at the very least within the states but also in a more general sense there needs to be um, a, a discussion on this, a dialogue on this, so that when we are talking about people who are using the internet, talking about international communication, talking about the fact that the world is getting smaller and smaller, um, you know, we need to to talk about this so that we don't have uh, people being confused because confusion breeds that that instability, which will then breed more problems. Yeah, both in this area and others. You know, so having that discussion on an international level so that we can say, you know, what's the age of consent? How are we going to handle it? How are we going to manage it? How are we going to uh, educate people on this and enforce it? You know, it should be an international thing because th it, that, that is, again, also one of the reasons why you have problems with uh, sex trafficking in some countries as well, where within that country, their awareness, their... their um, kind of usage of of their laws doesn't really necessarily involve the age of consent yeah it's not a big thing it's not something that is openly agreed or it is very young and as a result them taking advantage of young people and and using them for for uh, trafficking or for their own kind of ends to one extent or another is much more acceptable to some people than others and we need to try and make that a blanket thing where it is only acceptable up to a limit and that limit is agreed by everybody and even if it isn't agreed by everybody it is enforced by everybody that is the thing that needs to to take place but let me know what you guys think again i'm starting to rabbit on um you know we've got three points here a lot of things to discuss what do you think about this this guy austin jones uh were you aware of him before you know let me let me know everything that you guys think on this and what you've what you've got to say but uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you found this at all interesting or thought-provoking, then please drop us a like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care.